Welcome to the Scrap Codex coverage of the Fabius Bile Trilogy. We begin with Primogenitor by Josh Reynolds. It is the first novel in the series, which deals with Fabius Bile and his assault on the Elder Craft world Luganath. The novel begins with the Emperor's Children Apothecary, Oleander Co., returning to the dead crone world Urum to meet with his former master, the titular Fabius Bile. He is taken to Bile by World Eater Apothecary Arian Zorzi, who tells Oleander that Bile is slowly dying. Oleander tells Bile that the warlord Kasparos Telmar, leader of the Twelfth Company, has asked for his help in attacking the Craftworld Luganath. Bile accepts, as he might procure Eldar spirit stones and other loot in such an attack, but on the condition that Oleander presents his case to the rest of the Consortium, a warband of affiliated Chaos Space Marine Apothecaries from various legions under the command of Fabius Bile, formed in the aftermath of the shattering of the Emperor's children. His plan is accepted by a few members, convincing Bile that the plan is viable. Bile and his gland hounds, a subtype of new man, created through the implantation of a modified form of space marine gene seed implants, led by his favored servant Igori Oleander and other members of the consortium, make their voyage to the planet Sublime, where they will find a guide to the craft world. Bile orders the ship to take the Carrion Road, a warp tear near the planet, as he doesn't want the people of Sublime to learn he is there. To make sure he remains undetected, Bile orders the ship's Gellerfield to be deactivated. The ship enters the Carrion Road and is almost immediately beset by demons, one of them being the Slaneshi Keeper of Secrets Kanathara, whose hooves shatter mountains and whose voice lulls the sun. Kanathara offers Bile the chance to join Slaanesh and is refused. After a brief fight, Kanathara tells Fabius the real reason for its visit. The demon Primarch Fulgrim warns him to be careful making decisions or else Bile will end up in a prison of his own making. Bile banishes Kanathara and his ship breaks out of the Carrion Road and arrives at Sublime. Oleander, joined by the word-bearer Diabolist Sakara, land on Sublime and find Eldar Corsairs. The Corsairs and the Space Marines fight, and during the exchange, Igori of the Glandhounds catches a wounded Eldar Corsair, taking his shuriken catapult as a trophy. They are suddenly further interrupted by the arrival of Harlequins, who manage to wound Bile, forcing Bile and the Glandhounds retreat, but then they are attacked by the perpetual space marine Mordrak for breaking Sublime's peace. After managing to defeat Mordak, Bile and his warband escape. Back on his ship, Bile operates on the captured Eldar Corsair, downloading her memories of the craft world Luganath by extracting her eye and inserting a mind worm in her brain. With the directions in hand, Bile travels and arrives at the planet Krendrax, where Telmar and the Twelfth Company are. They are received by the Chaos Champion Savona, who takes them to Telmar's quarters. On the way, Oleander admits to Bile that he lied about Telmar asking for Bile's aid. In truth, Oleander wanted Bile to convince Telmar. Bile is angered at the deception, but controls his anger for the opportunity to raid Luganath. They enter Telmar's depraved court. Their brief negotiations lead to Bile offering Telmar the entire craft world in exchange for the crystallized psychers in it as reward for his assistance. Bile retreats to his ship while Telmar considers his offer. He is asked by Arian, an apothecary of the World Eaters, why is he undertaking such a risky endeavor, to which Fabius replies that he needs to learn how to transfer his mind from one body to the next. Telmar finally summons Bile back for a private audience, during which Oleander secretly secures alliances to overthrow Telmar. To help with their invasion of the craft world, Bile shows Telmar a method to mask their ships from Eldar detection which convinces Telmar of the plan's viability. Oleander is visited by the Harlequins, who assure him that their initial bargain is still in place. After making the appropriate preparations, Bile and Telmar lead the attack on Luganath. Savannah, a Slaneshi mutated human warrior loyal to Telmar, accompanies Bile to make sure he doesn't try any underhanded tricks. Sakara, a diabolist of the word-bearers who works for Bile, 
summons a horde of demons to assist. Their combined forces invade the craft world and lay waste to it. Vile secures his goal and manages to retrieve the crystallized seers of the craft world. Meanwhile, Telmar uncontrollably gorges himself on spirit stones and begins to ascend into a demon prince of Slanesh. However, he is cut down mid-ascension by Harlequins and craft world warriors. This is when Oleander reveals that he had made a deal with the Harlequins. He would lead Telmar to Luganath and let him be killed while the Harlequins would let the rest go free. Oleander proposes that the Twelfth Company would be free for Bile to lead so that they may one day be transformed into the Third Legion again. Bile rejects his offer as he wishes to lead mankind into a new era. As the craft world is shattered by the noise marines of the Twelfth Company, Bile leaves Oleander on it as punishment for his treachery. And with Talmar dead, Savonal, the Slaneshi mutant, joins Bile's consortium warband. This marks the end of the first novel. If you enjoyed this video, consider subscribing for more.